So you've bought a guitar, you've learned all the cowboy chords, you've bought a boss guitar, like me, you've been watching YouTube and learned something called the blues pentatonic scale, and you're loving it, and you can go all up and down across all the chord changes with this blues pentatonic. And you've learned how to bend notes and maybe a bit of vibrato. That is where this lesson kicks off. That's the skill level. Um, so here is a bold title, The Ultimate Guitar Lesson, <laughs> so let's see what I can do. You're about to hear a song, uh, seven verses. I'll play a verse and then we'll stop and we'll do a deep dive on it. The verse two will always be better than verse one and so on and so on as my skill levels increase to go from beginner to advanced. I'm hoping that you will spot yourself, your own journey somewhere along my journey now and say, I'm at verse 3, that's where my playing is at at the moment. And then you can listen carefully and see if you can get anything out of it. Or you might be at verse number 1 and, and have a longer journey. But we were all at verse number 1 at one point. So let's kick off with verse number 1. <laughs> it's this one but when you're just new you're that pleased to have just managed to play the lick you don't Q&A what you're doing in the moment you just get through it Whew, I did it so this if you really are trying to hit that note which is what I suspect it's like muscle memory in the same way you write your name with a pencil you don't break the pencil because you're too strong we operate a clutch in a manual car. It's all muscle memory. So practice first time every time getting the note that you intend to hit. So if you intend to hit that one and realize that that ain't this or that is not this and either listen to yourself in the moment or take yourself and listen to yourself and think yeah, I'm that guy, I'm not getting to pitch. Then, when you land on the note, are you the person that does this? That is not right, that's right. That is sharp. That's sharp. Look at that, I'm too strong, I don't know I'm doing it. I'm accidentally bending the note, because I'm not thinking about it. That's the pitched note. This is too sharp. Vibrato. If this was a fretless instrument, then maybe that would be doing something. But in a fretted instrument, consciously work up and down, not horizontally. You'll never go below pitch. You'll only ever be pitch or above unless you've got a whammy bar. But the point is that is vibrato. The speed and the style of vibrato, you could do a whole lesson on that, but just try not be this guy. Maybe you've seen Clapton doing that. He's not really, he's doing this. He's, he's, he has this weird thing where his whole hand floats off the neck, but he's still pitching up and down. He's not going like this. Lastly, restricting myself to the blues pentatonic exclusively. What's wonderful about the blues pentatonic is also its curse, this ability to go across all the chords in the progression just by playing the one thing. But you do that for a month. 
But to get out of that, let's watch the rest of this video and you'll see ways to get out of that. But first, let's go to verse 2, where I stay once again 100% to the blue scale. But the big difference is I've now learned a bit of nuance. My pitching is going to be better. My execution will be a bit classier. But I'm still very limited in my knowledge of scales. So I'm sticking exclusively to the blue scale. <laughs> Three fret bend, but advanced. Some passing notes. The vibrato was greatly improved. Placement of where I chose to pick was sometimes here, sometimes here. I was doing something called hammer-ons and pull-offs, and little Hendrix half chords. So it takes a bit of strength, but I'm actually going to here. Wouldn't have done that in verse one. Um, but again, be conscious, play in a deliberate way. Don't just randomly bend hard, you're aiming for that note. Uh, passing notes. The earliest passing note we learn in our development is usually that one, the flat five. So I was doing a bit of that in verse two. Or sometimes I'll, I'll play that note there kind of smooth. So that is a most wonderful note. And played in conjunction with the root note, you get this wonderful dissonance. So I was doing a little bit of picking placements. You start your life out playing in a logical place, but down on those meaty low strings, it's quite nice to... I've done a little bit of that in verse two. Hammer-ons, I was going something like... So I'm getting better now and little Hendrix half chords, so... At that point I'm on a C, so I'm just... My brain thinks about that C chord. Coming up to the major third. By the way, these big words like major thirds, who cares? Don't think about it like that, just learn that. And that goes back to G. I was doing a bit of that. Uh, the vibrato was definitely improving. I was, I made you believe it this time. So when I would pick, when I play vibrato, I might let it go straight first before the vibrato comes in. Nothing says confidence like this. So I'm improving. I'll meet you at verse three. At verse three, what we're going to do? I'm going to play nothing but the major scale. So purely major scale, no blues pentatonic at all, so straight away it'll have a sweeter sound, but I'm restricted, I've not got skills, I'm sticking exclusively to the major scale. Let's see what this sounds like. I'll keep the nuances though if you don't mind. Let's do some major scale. <laughs>
exclusively the major scale. And by major scale, you might learn to play it this way. Think of, a, think of that G chord. horizontal way. Learn both. In passing notes. That's what I mean by the major scale. In this verse I was Getting a bit better, I was doing a little bit of uh, open strings. Allows you to add a bit of speed, so whichever key you're in, have got any open strings, and the more you play, the more you realise whatever key you're in, there's always something you can use open strings for. But in G, you've got a myriad, you've got many in the key of A and a whole loading in the key of G, so... things like that. In that horizontal position, by the time I get to here, I'm in something what's called the BB King box position. So I was doing lots of that. Um, and I was in this verse for the very first time starting to do what musicians call playing the changes a little bit. Rather than just going up and down the scale, I did two things. One was, I did little Hendrixy things. When the band went to C, it was going Which is a lovely musical departure from somebody just doing chromatic runs. Bit of that. And also, in terms of playing the changes, when we went to the five chord, which don't worry if you don't know what the five chord is, in the key of G, it's the turnaround, it's the sort of the big chord that leads you back to the start, which would be D or D7. I went. Now I've heard that a million times in blues. I could just continue to play the country scale or the blue, sorry, the major scale, but by playing that little lick. To me says we're on D. So I'm now starting to think what licks are really good to spell out a chord sequence. And then if you're a theory guy, you can analyze it and think what is that note? The band's on D, it's certainly not a D note, it's an A note. It's actually the five note of a D chord. So now you know. In fact, look at that, you're actually going from 5 to 5. That is the 5 note of your G chord. And that is the 5 note of your D chord. I just realised that just now, but I don't give a shit. I never have given a shit about stuff like that. Because I'm led by my ear. So at this point, when I've discovered it, I don't care if you tell me it's wrong. It's in now. It's too late now. I've discovered it. So don't get hung up on the theory aspect, but when you hear a guitar player playing that way, analyze why why that sounds so good and just learn it. And if you don't understand it, there's always a day down the line where you can understand it. But let's meet you now at verse, what are we on? Verse four. Now this one's going to be interesting because in verse four, we're going to mix the major scale and the minor and this will allow me to play the changes even more and really start to look like a player who's starting to get a bit more classy. We'll see you on verse 4. <coughs>
Okay, I'm getting better. I started doing little chromatic slides as a kind of a nuance thing. So for example, I opened that one up by going as the band goes to the next chord, which would be the C chord, I do this. That shows intelligence to me that I um, I know the band has changed chords and I'm targeting a note that is in the next chord and yet really isn't naturally in the scale that I would play of G. Nah. It's, it's in the major scale, but it's not something you would normally hit when you're just going... In fact, if you do hit it in the wrong place, it sounds wrong. But if you hit it in the right place, it's like, oh, this guy knows what he's doing. So it's like um, waiting on the band to go to C, and when it does... And then, I did that more than once. And if the band goes to the four chord, the C, I did it again. So if I was you, if that's your root, find out what that note is. It's three frets below the root. And yet it's much more, if you're a blues pentatonic person, you're much more akin or used to going only two frets down below the root, because this is, this is maybe you. And bypassing that note, but on the four chord, or in this case the C, wonderful. Um, then I was targeting specific notes in the new chord. So when I did that little nuance, I didn't stop there. I'm on C, so what else can I do rather than just playing blues in G or country in G or major in G, I keep calling it country. Can I play anything from that C chord? Well, I did, I went. Walking down a C7. That's a C7. So that note's in a C7. That note's in a C7. That note's in a C7. And if that's a C note, that note's in a C7. So you get this kind of weird. If I, if I was an octopus. Oh, right, so. Oh, for God's sake. Don't try this at home, children. And then, that's all a C7. So I was just picking on these notes to bring interest to my playing. Um, I did it again somewhere else. And I was, yeah, as we went to C again. Right? Again, spelling out a C7 chord. So, my brain is starting to to do stuff now. I incorporated uh, I incorporated blue notes into BB King's box position. Remember when we talked about the major scale? By the time I'm here, I'm into BB's box position. But I stuck that in. That is an F note, which is the seven, the flat seven of a G. Again, don't worry about that. All you need, now you need to know is when you stick in that note in your BB King, and then maybe a little chromatic rundown, which is part of the blue scale. So that's me staying in the major box position, but thinking where are the blue notes if I wanted to find them? blue notes and a bit of the non-blue notes and you get that lovely colour. Cheeky little slides now, I'm starting to do things like where in the major, the previous verse I was doing to spell out the five chord, now I'm going things like that. That's just you don't need your right hand for a lot of that. Once you've done enough power, introduced enough picking power. You, you could 
just create volume with your left hand. Press button. All that stuff. Right, I'm going to say I'm getting advanced now. We're going to go into three verses. I'll, we'll talk about each one again. But here is my first verse that I would say is advanced and we'll stop it and talk about it in a moment. <laughs> Slides, oh yeah. So I'm now getting a bit more free with my, uh, my my slides once again. Plus, it's always a lovely that's a lovely mix of mixing the the blue minor pentatonic and the major sweet scale. For example, that's major, that's sweet. Major, blue. Well, we know the flat five is extremely blue. That's a passing note of the blue scale. And that is a very sympathetic major run with a passion note. That's one of the major, the flat three is, the, is a passion note. But again, big words, who cares? Then it's a cheeky little look, isn't it? Uh, blue, extremely blue. I pull off to an open G string. Now, the guy in the first verse would do this. It's a lovely mix. Think of blue notes as the sting, the acidic sting, and the major note as the sweetness. So that's the sting, and that restores a bit of sweetness to it. Um, then what do we do? Then I did the diminished. Oh yeah, as we were on the C chord. Just as it was about to end, I went. No, that's why I've called this one advanced. Diminished is one note. The next note has to be three notes above and three notes above or three notes below. Always the law of three. So, um, that's a diminished sounding thing. Here's a diminished chord. And every note in the chord is three frets away from the other one in terms of pitch. It's a different lesson. Point is, that followed by that is just blues scale. But just by coincidence, that is three, three semitones away. Which means if I stick to the law of three for a little bit, these are all three note intervals, three semitone intervals. So by going. It allows me to pull your chain as a listener. So you're happy grooving along and suddenly, whoa, where's it going with that? It's interesting, and that immediately separates you from the pack when you throw in things like that. 
Um, so that's all that was. Again, we could do a whole lesson on diminished. I have done lessons on things like that, but it's a lovely thing to stick in. And you could call it tension and release. I was giving you some tension there, but I've got to release you because nobody wants to be in tension too long. So when I go... That was a nice resolve. Because that note is in the following chord, the root chord, the G chord. So that's all that was. It's a whole wonderful world of diminished. Didn't get me started. I could talk for hours on diminished. Chord slides. How nice is that? Oldest trick in the book. Oh, another one, rocking, raking up the chords of called it. So I would go in, um, uh, what did I do when? was all of that. So what I was doing there was um, so that's just major scale with a passing note. I was hitting that note. Then I'm on G at the moment and to continue my major scale I went I went temporarily forming a little kind of almost like a minor shape a little E minor almost, so I was going. Up to the five chord, once again. walking up that chord. One of my favourite licks, but I was just... But now we're going to the five chord, so with that subtle little semitone bend... And then I incorporate this little... You might go... Which is fine, but by going that note is part of the major scale again, it's the sixth note, long story. Let's see what I did in the next verse. <laughs> extra semitone to follow the chords. So I was going I'm on the one chord G. But when the band goes to the four chord, I squeeze an extra note out of that bend to bring it up to the C note. Watch this to go from there to there. So again another sort of just grabbing the audience and saying we've now gone to the four chord and look, I'm clever enough as the lead player to, to really sell it and not just play random blues. I'm really selling we've gone to the four chord. Then I did a little, I love chord rakes. By chord rakes, I mean forming a chord and... Playing a chord. It can almost sound like shredding. <laughs> so I was doing a little, I'm just playing a chord, but very, very cleanly. So that's the chord I was raking. So. So. But 
we're in G major, but that's the thing about a major key. When you're playing, when your band is playing major, you're allowed to play minor if you want, but you can't do it the other way around. You can't play major thirds, major notes, uh, or maybe the major third in a minor song. It sounds all kinds of wrong, but the other way around, you can do it, making the major keys more versatile than minor keys. But I'm playing a G minor. Which sounds kind of interesting. And then a wee chromatic slide. All very minor, isn't it? Egyptian sounding almost. And then I went into my tried and tested run. I think it was a Gary Moore run. It's a Paul Cook run, but it's the kind of thing Gary Moore would do. That's something I've developed as my own because played across Gary Moore kind of minor blues it's a wonderful lick it's also a great exercise but all I was doing there was sliding down to the major third of C and then within that I just played with C I went just turning a C into a C7 and then I did a little Albert Lee thing just playing with a C chord and I happened to then end up perfectly in the BB King box position to resolve it let's get to the next one striking the note when there's no volume and then bringing it in, called violining, so... By sliding it down a semitone at that exact moment, that was signaling we've gone from G to C7. Then a little major run. Same again. By hitting these notes, I'm actually spelling out a, ma a major seven kind of sound. Long story. Major seven. Major seven. That was a little major run with a passing note. But now, and that's an F note. It's not in C. I don't know why that sounds so good, but we've now got to C. More violining. Then, turning C7, the band stays on C7, but I'm going to do a little Josh Smith. It's very minor, it's based on that shape. C minor, the band's playing C major, but as I said earlier, you can do minor runs as a lead player within a major key. To resolve back to the G, then some chicken picking. All I'm going is, that note is allowed to sound true, but these are to be killed to give that chicken sound. And all of that. 
that stuff. And that kind of lets you see what I was doing. Now here's the real message. All of that stuff is led by my ear. Although I can explain it in hindsight, it's all only in hindsight that I can explain it. When I'm creating these little songs and these little musical pieces, I'm not sitting there going, where could I go? I could go to the, no. I just, my ear says, go there. Or my fingers must have memory go there. Or I'll deliberately go somewhere weird for a laugh and I stumble on it. It's all led by my ear and only on hindsight can I explain to you why that sounds good is because of such and such. I don't know if that helps. Right, let's wrap this baby up. It's the longest video I have ever done. I bet none of you are still here, so I'm probably talking to myself now. But that's what this video is about. Fast forward to the bit that suits you and see if you can get something out of it. Whew, I'm tired now. I had a glass of wine last night, so I don't deserve a glass of wine tonight. Oh, you do, Paul, you do. Anyway, lovely talking to you, and I'll see you on the next vid. Bye for now.